Natalie, do you think we're Hello. ready? Hello. Hey. Hi. <laughs> can they hear me? Hi. Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, good. Um, shall we get started? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalie Cardin, and I'm the Business Development Manager at Voice123. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar presented by Nancy Wolfson and Anna Vicino. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the GoToWebinar software, you will see a control panel on the right hand of your screen. If you do not see it, you should see a little tab with arrows that you can click to open up the control panel. For most of you, it may be better to have the control panel away unless you would like to ask any questions. On the control panel, you will see a question and answer box where you can ask questions. At the very end, we will have a question and answer session where Nancy and Anna will try and answer as many questions as time permits. Nancy Wolfson, owner of Braintracks Audio, is the hottest top market voiceover branding coach, demo producer, and casting director on the local and global scene today. She cracks the code for beginners trying to break in. Countless celebrities and thousands of working pros have upped their game by learning Nancy's inside tips from her years as a Hollywood talent agent. Recent <laughs> talent agent. Recent and ongoing. Uh oh. Yeah. Natalie, you're cutting out. Can not work. Natalie, we can't hear you. You're cutting yeah, out there. She know is. Oh dear. Well, let's just start. Hmm. Natalie, I'm sorry. We, we must have lost Natalie, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and get started. This is this is uh, Anna Vicino here um, with BreakIntoVoiceOver.com. Sorry, we're starting off with a bang, guys. And um, I'd like to introduce Nancy Wilson. I hope you guys can hear us. Hey, gang. This is Nancy. Um, I think we're ready to get started. Um, I'm not able to hear Natalie, but uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, just to clarify uh, and take off from where we kind of got cut out there, uh, my business is break. Uh, my business with Anna is breakintovoiceover.com. It's an extension of my main business, which is braintracksaudio.com. For many years, I was a Hollywood talent agent and represented many of you folks for voiceover. Um, I was an agent and ran a voiceover department here in Los Angeles. And about nine years ago, I started my own business um, to help bridge the gap, really, for a lot of you folks who were interested in getting into voiceover, didn't know what to do, and always wanted to know from the inside what agents needed you to know, what agents needed you to do, and how to present yourselves in a really excellent way that could help you break in. So for years, I've been teaching the skills to people about what it takes to book jobs um, and what really makes a critical difference in terms of creating performances that help you book. Um, but in conjunction with that, I've also been advising people and producing demos for them that really get them signed and really get them work. And one critical difference in the kind of demos that I've always made for people um, has been the focus on branding. That's why my students have always enjoyed such great success since I very be first began doing this with people, is because I know from having been an agent, from having guarded that gate, um, that portraits of versatility, people, um, you know, you can turn wide once you get inside, but it's really important once you've amassed the skills for how to deliver amazing performances, once you know the difference between what makes a read good and what makes a read bad, the difference between volume that needs to be put forward on a television audition versus a radio spot, mic technique, script patterns, all that kind of a thing, you really need to know the difference between yourself and everybody else in the marketplace. Which is exactly why we wanted to start breaking the voiceover. Oh, wait, I'm Anna. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to get through this Anna bit quickly because really it's just... Um, I'm a working voiceover and on-camera talent, and I've been on here in L.A. for six years and worked in Atlanta for ten years before that. And um, I studied with Nancy, and I loved what I learned from her so much that I uh, insisted <laughs> that she devote time to this because there is a real, let's just say, I get contacted on a daily basis by actor friends, by um, by uh, uh, folks out there in the voiceover business who want to break in or get more skills. And um, and uh, so I wanted to do this where we are able to take the voiceover business aspect
think of it on a broader platform and be able to have an audience. So, what is breaking the voiceover? What is it? Really? Breaking <laughs> the voiceover. Putting some slides up here. Oh, here comes the slide. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Breaking the voiceover is a really excellent way for a lot of you folks to get the broad information before you dive into private. A lot of times when people start working with me privately, the first thing we do is talk about the business of the business. And I love that we've now created a forum where a lot of you guys can get that big, broad lecture information from me in um, a group forum all at once so that when people dive into private, it can really be all about you. You're going to hear a recurring theme here about branding, and hence the topic of today's conversation. But when we dive into a private course of study, I really love when it gets to be all about you so that we can learn the skills that are good for you, the ones you need to work on, the ones you don't even need to bother with because they're not right for you, what's right about your brand, how we can fashion a demo that really puts forward what's excellent about you, and what's likely is to book you into a job, and all of that kind of thing. And I love that we can, thanks to this break into voiceover forum, dive in on stage two with you when you begin private because you've gotten the big, broad concepts in a teleseminar or a webinar way where you're sitting out in an audience. Sometimes it feels awkward that someone in their first lesson with me is just sitting there listening to me blather at them for 50, 50 minutes about the business of the business. I love that you can get all this information in the big, broad way so that when you start a private that's all about you, you really get some dialogue instead of listening to me talk at you for 50 minutes. And here's some things as my experience um, as a voice talent and being able to pretty much hit the ground running since I got my demo with Nancy back in July of 2003, um, is that we've, we've kind of called it down to what you have to treat your voice over career like a business. You have to, well, hold on, let me skip forward to this part here. And then we'll talk about why branding is important for all these things. We, we have a voiceover business plan. Oh, there goes the slide. Yeah, I know. I'm just a little slow with slides, guys. Bear with me. First time with PowerPoint. PowerPoint Virgin. Okay. Can you say that? Virgin? <laughs> I just did. <laughs> this is excellent. See, I think a lot of voiceover classes um, only graze the very bottom of what's necessary here. And, of course, this is the former agent in me talking. But we could talk until the cows come home about acting. And acting is a necessary part of creating good performances for this thing. But having been an agent, I know that there's so much more that needs to be built on top of the bottom of that pyramid for you guys to really make money at this. Please forgive me if I sound too goal-oriented about wanting you guys to make money. But ultimately, this is a really fun business, and there's a lot that can be done with expanding your skills and learning the acting for all of this. But any kind of class that limits itself to talking about acting and playing around with character doesn't really take you to the goal of making money. So... Um, Forgive us if this gets a bit dry for a minute because we need to talk about business if we need to make you some money. So we have our voiceover business plan. As you see in front of you, we have the four must-haves of your voiceover business plan. And these are education, inventory, marketing, and means of distribution. Uh, do them in order and complete them is what the slide says. Uh, now, we're yeah. basically trying to get you as a product out to market so that you can make some money on this product that is you without hemorrhaging too much cash, which is always a good thing. Exactly. First things first, everybody needs an education in skills and in style. Again, there are a lot of classes out there that teach skills, but if you don't understand what the style is that you're presenting to the marketplace, you're going to have a lot of great skills on versatility, and you won't be able to get yourself marketed properly. You can have the best product in the world, and if it isn't marketed and packaged properly, it's just going to sit on a shelf. So education it's a matter of a private course of study, is a coursework that teaches you performance skills, and getting also an objective understanding of your personal style, which is your brand. Um, quickly, I'm just going to burn through these things, but basically, um, you want to begin with commercial demo. You don't want to expand to versatility training and animation demos um, until your commercial foundation is solid. That commercial demo that should really be no more than a minute or maybe a minute and 15 seconds should really be an amazing snapshot of who you are and what you put forward in the world. The best compliment most of my students get on their demos after they're all done is not only that they sound like real spots and all that kind of thing, which of course they totally should, 
and they should be fun and entertaining if the person's fun and entertaining. But basically, I think the best compliment is when their friends and family listen to that demo and they say, man, that is so you, because it really needs to reflect what your style is. That demo is a way that you foreshorten the getting to know you relationship between a buyer and what you're telling them that you can service them in doing. So that takes us into item number two, inventory. You want a narrowly branded commercial demo first that perfectly conveys what's unique, obvious, and sometimes subtle about your personal voice print. Um, again, this is your primary inventory, your first demo. At a certain point, some of you are going to get out there and make secondary and tertiary demos. Yeah, of course. And by now, I actually have seven demos, and I use all of them because I'm, like you said, turn wide once you get inside. But getting that commercial demo and hitting the ground running with a good commercial demo, then I was able to slowly build up other demos and slowly build my career so that other, you know, I'm working in other types of voiceover work. And if it's done properly, there can be moments on a commercial demo that can show how your brand works in hyperbole. To do a nuance of a character, quite frankly, the thing that you're going to get cast first and foremost in in animation is you as a cartoon. So if you really wanted to save you know, your time and resources, a really good, tight commercial demo ought to be able to show how you operate in some degree of character. And that can service you in animation until you have the finances to pay for an animation demo. Um, same with a uh, narration demo and any of that kind of a thing. But anyway, the education, the inventory on a primary demo, the marketing, item number three. The marketing issue, you need branding and a proper website so that you can have a presence in the world. Marketing means having, uh, used to mean having graphics for your CD cover that represented what was going on orally on audio track of your demo. Now that graphic that would have and is also still on the cover of your CD cover is now the home page of your website. It is, in a sense, your logo. It's your golden arches. It should never be a picture of yourself. There are many reasons for this, and we can go into detail about that later. You don't want mouths and microphones and corny images that simply reflect the fact that you're in voiceover because everybody in the voiceover marketplace is also in voiceover. A microphone doesn't distinguish you from the woman on your right and the woman on your left. A picture of somebody's mouth doesn't distinguish you from the guy on your right and the guy on your left. You want an image or a brand or a concept that really helps stamp the style of yourself, not just the fact that you are in the voiceover business. I often make the analogy that you wouldn't go to a cardiologist that had a happy dancing scalpel on his business card. We know he uses one. You know. Um, if you're going to a doctor that's all about holistic health, you wouldn't want a stethoscope on their business card. You would maybe have that business card made of bamboo or something like that, um, something that looks, looks earthy. So marketing is a way to show on the outside to tease them in in an accurate way to the audio they're going to get when they hit play. The fourth thing, means of distribution. It's very important, and most of you folks who are already on this webinar know this, there's no way to get your product out to market unless you have home studio equipment that is at least audition quality, and you know how to use it, and you know how to perform in the absence of a director. So basically, education, inventory, marketing, and means of distribution. If you knock out all these things in a good, focused, efficient way, then what you'll have done for yourself is you've created a money-making machine in your basement. If you draw a line under item number four and you do all of those things in that order without getting distracted and spending money on uh, classes about things that don't take you through items number one, two, three, and four, then you won't sometimes have the money left in your budget to get items one, two, three, and four achieved. After you've done items one, two, three, and four, then you ought to have everything that you need to generate money from this business model to pay for things that I could throw up on the screen that would be items five, six, seven, and eight a secondary demo, a more expensive microphone, new classes with other people, expanding what you know. Um, but you want to do these things in order and complete them so that you'll have a money-generating business model. So we are going to be focusing on branding today because branding is extremely <laughs> important. It's going to it, – branding colors all four areas of your voiceover business plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. It, it, branding, it rises out of your course of study. You, you know, you have to study and you have to work with 
somebody, you know, use that branding and who you are. Essence of your demo, uh, which is your inventory, it thrives in your marketing. It's all over your marketing. Obviously, branding and marketing are fairly synonymous these days. And it, it's going to affect every audition and every job you ever the interview you have with the from you need to bottom. understand what's unique about yourself, and you need to market yourself with that understanding. Okay, so we've just thrown a quote up on the screen here that uh, I might need to explain here. The power of a brand is in proportion to its scope. Uh, from a great book called The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding. It's a little complicated. Basically, what we mean is you want your brand to be like a hot knife through butter. If you have a demo, which is your inventory, if your demo puts you forward in a versatile way, it's very difficult for an agent or a buyer to be able to pocket you into a job quickly. You want your demo to be able to say to the world of agents and buyers, I'm the blah, blah, blah one. Now, does that mean you should be a one-note Charlie? Not necessarily, but it should be very clear from your demo that you know that you know which one you are in the crayon box. There's always some good news and some bad news. The reason branding is so important is kind of a byproduct of the fact that the barn doors have blown off the hinges in voiceover. Anyone and everyone can learn the necessary techniques to get into voiceover. Pretty much, 98%. You can get the skills, improve your skills, accept and know your brand. So. VoiceOver is no longer judging you at the gate or admitting you or deciding to not admit you based on a genetic sound. It used to be that if you didn't have that prescribed expected DJ sound, they'd either send you to broadcasting school or tell you to go home. Most of you know this. There's any and every possible genetic sound that can get into VoiceOver and then can get hired in VoiceOver if you understand the skills that you need to perform well. But because of this, it's very important that everybody know which one they are in the marketplace. It's an issue that's an economy of scale. When there are many, many, many items in the marketplace, it's critical that every single one of those items have brand definition. If you want to go back to versatility, you're going to throw the clock back to an era when there were only four people who got to do voiceover, and each of those four people were very versatile. You know, if you're doing dinner theater in Iowa, there are only four actors in the whole city, uh, and it's possible that you know the guy who's in the di dinner theater needs to be able to play the dad, the duck, the son, the crying baby, right? Well, in a very glutted marketplace, we need to know which kind of dad you are, and you don't get to wear all those hats. And let's be clear about a glutted marketplace, because as we all know, which is why we're all here on the internet, it's a global. You know, voiceover is a global marketplace now. Yes, you will always have work and be able to pursue work in your regional market. But now you can pursue work all over the globe, so why not enter that blooded market with a specific brand that offers something new? And, try, and also, do I want to say this, because I was that talent who said, I can do anything, Nancy. I, am, I do funny voices, and I do comedy, and I'm just so great. I can do all these things. And that was a tough pill to swallow to hear, no, you just, let's just focus right now, do this commercial demo. It's the best, it's the best thing I ever did. Well, because a portrait of versatility can kill your sales objective, even if you are talented enough to be able to do a wide range of things. Well, you have to engender trust first. With, Absolutely. With buyers. You have when to I was, an, their when I was an agent and I would get piles and piles of demo submissions on my desk, I already had a perfectly complete roster of people who we represented. And any agent that's doing a good enough job to keep their doors open for business doesn't really need a new talent on the roster. And here's the inside tip. You have to be able to get in by showing which one you're going to be on the roster. And the good news is, is that Everybody is a unique fusion of their experiences and their actions and the way that the world has beaten you up to get you a sense of humor that's unique, to give you parenting skills that are unique to you. And though everybody likes to learn how to get more versatile, there's something that's very particular about the snowflake pattern that you walk around in as yourself. And that's what helps an agency that they don't already have you on the roster. That's what helps differentiate you from all the people that are already on that roster. One of the things that people always used to get told and was sort of a disappointment to them is that, thanks, but we've already got your sound and style covered. That's when I started my business of coaching people on branding. Because if you get told, thanks, but we've already got you covered on the roster, something went wrong 
in how your branding was concocted because unless you've got a Siamese twin who is already on their roster, they don't literally already have you on the roster. It's just that you've either presented a portrait of versatility, and versatility already exists on their roster, or you haven't deep enough into portraying what's unique about your personal style to show them how they don't actually already have you on their roster. And uh, um, so now we get some pictures of different brands, and I will apologize to all the Siamese twins on the call. <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't mean to be insensitive to your needs. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, this is good, this is good. We've got Kleenex and Puffs, Heinz and Hunt, Sparklets and Evian. Exactly. Let me show what we're talking about here. Um, no supermarket needs a new condiment on the shelf either. But somehow, new brands pop up on the shelf every single day. So, let's look at Heinz and Hunt. They're both condiments. They're both the red stuff that goes on meat, right? Um, What's the difference? There's room on the shelf for both. Heinz is more suited to steaks. Hunts is more suited to burgers. And that is put forward in the branding and in the packaging, right? The content is literally a little different, and the people who've branded and packaged it make sure that anybody looking at that item on the shelf can tell that without having to unscrew the lid and dip their finger in and taste it. Um, Heinz has sharper font on the outside. It's got more vinegar in the content of what's on the inside. Heinz has bubblier, goofier looking font on the outside and sugar on the inside. There's literally a difference in um, and the difference in the company made clear by the artwork and the branding and the packaging. Let's take a look at Sparkless and Evian. I don't know. Water's water. If you live in a place like Los Angeles, People try to pretend that they taste different. Come on, I don't think they taste all that. But if I decide to taste that, there are a lot of let's say, women there who have nice high voices, and quite frankly, they sound quite similar to other women who have nice high light voices. But there's some nuance of their personality that, if you really work on it with a branding coach, we can pull out and put forward and differentiate you from those other people. For example, Evian Sparklets—they possibly do taste very much the same. But the way that they're branded and packaged starts to make them seem like they are actually distinguishable enough that they both merit shelf space. Um, Evian is selling to people who want to think that they're drinking spa water and it's possibly a little bit more expensive. And the packaging is pink and it's frankly marketed more to chicks. Sparklets is um, marketed more to children. It's literally, um, you know, runs around in those trucks that have the green bangly things on them. Sparklets is marketed to children. If you live on the West Coast, you might be familiar with Arrowhead water. That's sold as more of a sports water. Come on, you pour this stuff into a glass and it kind of all tastes the same. But each of these waters has earned their own unique shelf space by packaging the nuance of what's different about it or what they want to be perceived as being different about it. Or perhaps they're going after um, a slightly different demographic. So branding and packaging separates them on the shelf. Kleenex versus Puffs, you know, Puffs came up to try to say, hey, you probably already have tissues in your house, but it's, this is the one you need to buy when you're sick. So, again, I'm not sure that a lot of people could tell the difference between tissues, except that Puffs got some, got some shelf space by branding and packaging itself with the unique purpose and function, and possibly it is slightly softer, and possibly that is the thing that you want to be using when you've got a cold. So all of this by way of saying that sometimes there is a very um, similar thing that you might be putting forward about yourself as it might compare to what they might already have on the roster, but you want to dig deep with the branding coach about the nuance of what's different about your life experiences and actions so that you have something to bring forward in the packaging and the branding and how you sell yourself that can say, hey, wait, don't tell me that you've already got me on the roster. I'm unique. All right. So. What materials feature your branding? This is pretty straightforward. Your narrowly branded commercial demo. Uh, your graphics for your hard CDs, business cards, postcards, especially any tangible items that you're going to be sending out. Your website, your HTML email correspondence. Do we want to explain that? And your Voice123 web store and any other web portal that you're going to have. Um, Someone should be able to look at your Voice123.com page or your website page and go, oh, I get which one he is. Oh, 
I get which one she is. It's not just a picture of somebody in front of a microphone. It's not just a picture of a microphone. It's like looking at an album cover and then hitting play on the album. It's meeting buyer expectations. You know what I mean? You're taking people into your storefront. And um, I think the best thing that I can use as an example is um, there's a game that is played in marketing. I remember when I was an agent, and I know this as I now craft demos, uh, I write them, I, um, I build the music for them. I craft them in such a way that it has a good buyer experience. And that's what you want. There's a bit of a riddle that you're putting forward when you put your graphics on your demo cover, when you put your graphics on your website, when that becomes your avatar on your voice123.com page. You're basically saying, here's a style, and you're teasing a mystery. A buyer or an agent looks at that and they go, hmm, we're going to get to this in a moment when you start to see examples, but they go, hmm, I'm getting the sense that this is kind of, um, gosh, I don't know what to say about this, but this person seems to have a lot of energy. I see all these bright colors. Huh, I don't know. There's a little bit of a mystery here. Then they hit play on the demo, and they get a lot of action and urgency and energy from your uh, music and the language and the vigor you put forward in your acting, and it all lines up. And also, too, I want to comment on the HTML email correspondence, which is, you know, when, when people contact you privately through Voice123, I hope that you guys are responding using your graphic and within email don't ask attachment to all stuff, but just make nice email stationery. Basically, today I got an email from somebody who signed up for our Acting for Advertising teleseminar on Monday night, and he was uh, submitting his demo for possible demo review. We're going to be reviewing four demos. Actually, Nancy is with her agent ears. It's awesome. Um, so this guy, and he communicated with me with his branding, and I just thought that was so smart because I automatically had an idea of who he was, and sure enough, I played his demo, and it matched. It's great. See, when it matches, you're actually not only doing yourself a service by having uh, an accurate thing go out to the world, but you're allowing the buyer to be right. And that's an interesting cycle. The buyer go, I think this is kind of going to be, I'm not sure, but getting the sense of flavor is sort of blank. And then when they hit play, and support that perception with performance, music, language, script, which is exactly, exactly, which is exactly what you got them thinking you were going to give them. You allow them to be right in how they've guessed at the mystery of who you are, and giving the buyer or the agent the experience to play that game and be right about their guess has value just there. So what do you use to brand you? There's, well, we're going to kind of blow through this because there's so much we use to brand you, but I want you guys to like have, have a notebook ready because we're going to blow through some of these things. Write these down and start to get an awareness of who you are. I know that when I went through this process of branding with Nancy, and it takes a few, a few privates even to get into, like, because, I, I, of course, I was tempted, like, on the second lesson, like, what am I? Do me. Do my branding. I want to know what I am, you know, because it's really fun. It's, it's a really fun experience to go through that. But write some of these it's questions down. It's fun for down. you. I get the uncomfortable position of holding the mirror up to people and helping That's to tell true. them the uncomfortable true. truth about what they walk around with in the world. Um, so what do we use to brand you? Well, that's good. That segues right into uh, you. We use you to brand you. What, uh, what are you like? I'll dive into this list with you guys. Basically, this is something that is done in the exchange of a private consult where we really get to dive into this. But I want to give you guys some value here so that you can start to think about this stuff and ruminate on this stuff your, on your own. So um, you and your experiences. What makes you different um, from the people around you? Again, you might have a genetic sound that's quite similar to other people, but nobody has lived your life. Okay. What about, like, you, we were talking the other day, and you're talking about when, like, an ang if an angry person comes into the lesson with a chip on their shoulder. Oh, right. That's like, the whole, I'm not here to fix you. I'm just here to brand you. In other words, you know, some, this is kind of like, you know, when somebody walks in and they've kind of got that chip on their shoulder, it's kind of like dating, you know. Someone walks in the room, and they carry with them a certain attitude and a certain style, whether they're aware of it or not. It's not my business or my job to, you know, change the way people behave in the world. It's my, it's my business and my job to capture an oral snapshot of that because, you know, although uh, this branding investigation oftentimes feels like therapy, to change you would be for another couch, not mine. Basically, I can tell a person like that, you know, here's the deal. You do kind of walk them with a chip 
shoulder grab and everybody else is involved in complaint and this and complaint and that. You know what? Let's wrap that up and package it and send it out to the world because a lot of spots begin with problem then go into product and then go into solution. And there's a ponderous ranting that happens a lot in a lot of commercial spots. And you know what? That's kind of useful. You might want to be the guy that's sort of got that um, ironic eye roll to the world and I'm not here to change you. I'm just here to brand you. And if you go into this world as a guy who's kind of, you know, got that heady analysis and ironic commentary about everything, then that's what we brand and package about you. And you know what? That's Dennis Miller. So Bill Mars made a whole career being that way. So it's not for me to say, hey, you're angry. You need to be nicer any more than I would send you into an acting class that would take Bill Mars' brand and dilute the is critical enough. I want to take that and go, okay, how can we use that to make you money? Exactly. So you, your experiences, your life that you live, we talked about that. You know, are you a mother of three? Are you a smoker? Are you a rodeo clown? Whatever. Your likes and your dislikes. Ooh, I like this one a lot. I have to think about, like, the magazines that I have on order, and I don't think about the books that I buy, but then when, when you said that, I would look at it and say, oh, ooh, that tells a lot about me that I bought the secret. Yes. I bought the secret. There, I said it. <laughs> okay, your own demographic, your own age, the part uh, of the country or world in which you were raised. Again, not here to change you. 25 years ago, they would have sent somebody who had a southern accent to broadcasting school, and they would have told you to get rid of it. But today, you can own a regional campaign because of it. So we want to take what's unique about your personal style and take it to market with confidence. Um, you know, another quick example is... Uh, Someone who studied with me via phoners from Vancouver, who's originally from South Africa. Um, one of my students, Adam Bear, um, he actually won an award last year for best male voice talent on Voices.com. Um, initially, it would have seemed that there wouldn't be a big marketplace for him because he didn't live with a national accent. But you know what? Things have changed so much over the last few years. All the wonderful companies like Voice123.com have been able to offer you guys that he now has access to buyers all over the world and things have made it difficult for him to get representation 10 years ago. The particularity of international access is actually the reason he works a single day in voiceover. All right, questionnaire. Love the questionnaire. You know, there are a bunch of questions you can ask yourself. What What is the one word that everyone would say describes you? What is the export about you the most? What would they say? It told me about you. What would, what would your mom? Uh, what word would your mom use to describe you? Like if she's at a party at a late lunch, what would your dad use? To you? Well, best friend from college say about you that even if they haven't seen you in the last twenty years, odds are hadn't changed much. And oh, okay, go. Oh, I like this branding black jack. This is one of the best things that I think I use when I'm really helping people understand the nuances of a brand. Again. There's a difference between archetype and brand. Let me be clear on this. Archetype is the big, broad category you fulfill. Brand is what's unique about you in that archetype, in the big, broad category, right? So if we were going to take a look at the branding black back, the concept of that is being able to recognize the subtext under the text, being able to understand the brand that exists within the archetype. So let's look at some of these celebrities. I would talk about people I know in voiceover, but it's much easier to use celebrities, not because you know they're better or worse than anybody who does voiceover, but because they're a common reference point for all of us. Um, let's start with Brad Garrett, who's a lovely guy. He used to be his agent, actually. What's really interesting about Brad's brand, okay, and you, many of you know him from Everybody Loves Raymond, um, he's got that big, deep voice, but what's interesting about it is that he doesn't play mean or scary characters. His strong suit is comedy. So the branding black back for him would that would be something that, like, it's interesting how not scary he is for such a big, deep voice. You know? Somebody like Megan Mullally, she's, the branding black jack game on her would be, you know, she's awfully mean and spicy for someone with such a sweet voice. So someone like that could be put into an archetype because of her genetic quality. Oh, she's got the bright, perky voice. But what starts to become an interesting and viable brand about her is the thing that runs in the subtext, that she kind of plays these mean characters in spite of the fact that she walks in the room with such a perky pitch. James Gandolfini, you know, 
Branding Blackjack, I don't know. He's awfully sexy for a big, fat, sweaty guy, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Um, so, you know, finding from your own mental investigation or asking your friends to be honest with you, you know, what's unusual about me given the fact that I would seem to be blank or the thing that's interesting is that my genetic quality is X, but sometimes it's interesting that quite contrary to that, or what you would expect from that, I'm Y. You know, we oftentimes think that somebody who has a southern accent is um, very warm and sweet. It's kind of funny to find um, people who are kind of mean given the fact that they have an archetype that would say something quite the contrary about themselves. Do you want to, Wendy Malik or no? We're, we, we're kind of That's kind of the same. Let's, let's keep going. Okay, we're getting short on time, guys. Okay, so here's the deal. We are, we're not able to send you guys out this link, but you can, I have a link down there at the bottom. If you can either go there now or go there later, we're not going to be able to have time to uh, play these demos over the call. Um, all this artwork that you're going to see is uh, done by Jason Sykes of Village Green Studios at villagegreenstudios.com. He's an amazing graphic designer and uh, web designer. He's the one and only guy I send my people to, and I work with Jason directly in helping concoct an image that is a direct byproduct of what I've evaluated about your brand in private. So we have on the link down at the bottom, which I'll show this link on all four of the next pages, um, and you guys are muted, so you can play these demos if you want to hear the difference. Uh, we have two, on the next four pages, this page in particular, we have two cover work. What, we have two demo cover artwork. It's the cover art. It's the cover, cover of their art. CD. And it's also the main page of their website. Now, both of these are going to be, appear quite similar. Do you want to bring up the second one? Sure. Okay. This is like one page. Oh, I see. Okay. There we go. Okay, so go, go for it, Nancy. Okay. Both of these I women have... Nancy? Yes. Actually, every. Mm. What's that? Angela, I can't hear you at all. Oh gosh, I'm just going to yes, keep. Uh, everyone, everyone has the link on the go to webinar chat, so everyone can open it from your own computer. Oh great! Oh thank you, thank you, thank you. That's good. I didn't know that. Yay. Okay, well, I'm going to zip through these really quickly. It would seem that these are both women. Um, they are. Um, they both have low pitches. These are both the kind of women that get stopped in the supermarket and said, wow, what a voice. You should do voiceover. What's interesting about them is that sexy, I mean, if you were to just listen to them genetically, you would think they almost sound similar. And an agent, if they were not branded with an eye and an ear towards separating them in the marketplace, if we just heard them each speak a sentence, an agent might say, oh, thanks, we don't need you, Lauren, we've already got Stacy on the roster. Oh, thanks, Stacy, we don't need you, we've already got Lauren on the roster. Because genetically, they sound quite similar. They're those low-pitched women that get told, oh, we love your voice. But they couldn't be more different if they tried. stacy has got a very cosmopolitan vamp to her. Lauren's this adorable tomboy chick. Lauren's voice is awfully low for how young she is. She doesn't really put forward a big sex kitten factor in spite of the fact that she's got a low voice. Stacy Page doesn't have any kind of tomboy going on in there, although she's very interesting to women and to men. So genetically, they're entirely, they're quite similar. But really, branding-wise, they couldn't be more different. If they didn't have good branding, they couldn't both live on a roster. Thanks to good branding, they're separate and both deserve a spot on the shelf. Okay, next we have Jason Bowers and Mike Wood. Again, both, both guys, as you, when you listen to their demos, you'll hear they both sound like young hip guys. No agent needs another young hip guy. It's important for you to know which young hip guy you are. Jason Bowers starts to set the expectation that we're going to hit play in here, a hyper young rockin' guy, and that's exactly fulfilled when we hear the demo when we hit play. Mike Wood's got a cozier, darker quality to his, hipness, it's a, it's a lower, groovier drive to the sexiness. You can tell that from the image. A blind person can hear what's going on in the separate business models. Okay. And now we have, oh, I love these two because they're so similar yet so different. Blaine Parker and Bruce Barker. Bruce Barker, who won the uh, Best Branding Award in the Boise Awards. This is interesting. Actually, these guys are friends. 
it's funny, they sound so similar. I just heard Bruce Barker this morning when I was listening to Howard Stern. He was on two commercials this morning. Um, so, Bruce. Um, these guys are friends. They sound quite similar, and I think there was a concern when one started studying with me that I'd already branded and packaged his buddy. But um, once you get to know them, they're entirely different. These two guys would have run a huge risk of getting told by a talent agent, thanks, but we've already got the other one on the roster. When you come to um, get to know them, you start to realize that Blaine is way more sarcastic than Bruce. Bruce is very bright and cheery, but genetically, they sound like twins. Were it not for good and accurate branding, they couldn't both live on the same roster. They couldn't both go out for the same job. So it's really important that branding make everyone understand what's unique about you and separate you and earn you shelf space. Okay. And finally, who next? Me. There we and go. And Ellen Dossel. Great. Okay. Very similar. You guys both go out under the same archetype. Mm -hmm. You both do warm moms, warm moms yeah. mm -hmm. but there's a vamp and a youth to you um, that is put forward in your sassy, hip sling and girly girl with the duster. <laughs> and, I, and I get asked all the time, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, I wish. <laughs> and, and I have to say this, too. I, I'm looking at this artwork again. I'm reminded of you can see the woman's nails are red. And in the original artwork, the woman's nails did not have a varnish color on them. And that was how much Nancy and Jason nerd out on this stuff. They were like, she needs to have red nails or else we're not sending the right branding message. And I was like, wow, I feel so taken care of. I love it. <laughs> Nancy probably doesn't remember Did we get that, that image implant? <laughs> Anyway, you guys both go out as moms, but Ellen's much more the Midwestern nursery healthcare spot mom. You're more the sassy, vampy, sparkly, winky, winky mom. And that gets made clear the instant we hit play on both of your demos. There's value, of course, to both of you. You both go out under the same archetype. You both are represented by the same talent agency because of and thanks to the fact that you have created branding that makes you separate. Had you only put yourself forward, Anna, as another warm mom, they might have said, thanks, but we've already got Ellen Dossel on the roster. But you're right. both at the same agency, and you both work. Yep. Thank God. All right. So what does branding do to increase your profit margin? Crap, we're running out of time, too. I want to get to some Q&A. Let's blow through these. Because then we still have to do the cure for the bad demo in 3D, and that's really, that's so good. Okay. Branding. Branding uh, helps an agent want to find you and go out at market. We talked about that. Makes it easy for your agent to put you into auditions that you're likely to book. That's important. Agents need a little hand-holding, especially at the beginning of your relationship. Um, so make it easy for them to send you the, all the auditions that you could possibly book instead of just not, instead of just like being forgot, forgotten on the roster because you're too versatile so they don't know where to put you. Makes it easy for people to remember you. Buyers, you want repeat business. This whole careers are made off of repeat business. Uh, it's the album cover that takes in the album. We talked about the psychological benefit. Um, and voiceover is a cog in the business machine of advertising. You're selling yourself to people in an industry called advertising. You're not necessarily. I'm sorry. You're not necessarily selling yourself to people in the business of entertainment and acting. So it's really amazing when you can brand and package yourself in a way that shows that you understand advertising because although this is a fun and entertaining business, we are really on the split of acting that operates in the world of advertising. So to show advertisers that you know how to advertise yourself rather than just a picture of yourself with a microphone or just an old black and white headshot from 1985 says that you're hip to the game of what they do for a living. Now, um, Agent Ears, I, this is one of the best things that uh, services I think that Nancy does is called, she does a demo review with Agent Ears. And um, we're sort of running out of time. So yeah, I'm we are. going to talk about this in a really quick way. If you should want to get yourself branded, and if you want me to review your demo with agent ears and tell you how agents and buyers would respond to your demo, the good, the bad, and what you could do to make it better, um, to get you a consult to do this, go to braintracksaudio.com, click on the Start Today button, read everything, click on the Contact button to email me to get an appointment, or you could also email me at braintracksaudio at yahoo.com. That's B-R-A-I-N-T-R-A-C-K-S-A-U-D-I-O at yahoo.com. Well, we're going to have a slide on that in just a second. Okay. I want you to put yeah. into the subject line, I want a private phoner, or put into the subject line, I want a private in-person, if you happen to live in Los Angeles, and I can sit down with you either on the phone or in person 
and review your demo with agent ears and help you get an objective understanding of what people are getting when they see your page on Voice123. Is your demo something that needs a facelift? All of this kind of thing is something that we can determine in a, um, in a lesson for you. But to give you a quick hit on what it is, and, and this is where we have the cure for a bad demo in 3D. This is what's going on in my brain when I'm listening to this for you guys. And this quick little bullet pointing might allow some of you guys to um, listen to your own stuff with these things in mind if you want to start to do some of this work for yourself on your own. How, how can you start to get an objective um, uh, sense of, gosh, am I on the right track here? Because let me tell you what I'm thinking when I listen to these things. When I listen to a demo, um, I'm listening typically for three things. I'm listening for the production quality, I'm listening for direction quality, and I'm listening for performance quality. The fusion of all of these three things can be amazing or it can kill it. So what am I saying here when I say deadly production? If I'm listening to a demo and it's not working on some level for you, it's going to be because there's a problem in one of these three zones or in a couple of these three zones. And, and we do go into pretty good detail about this on our voiceover business MP3 that's for sale, where, where we also light up the four business must-haves where we outline everything. But I, I do, yeah. Talk, talk. Okay, so basically, it can be problematic because of deadly production, okay? One of the things that makes an, an agent is going or a buyer is going to be listening to your demo, and they make a determination about whether they want to continue to listen to your demo or whether you're competing on a top market level within the first four to five seconds of your demo. You don't want your demo to start with, this is so-and-so, as announced by somebody else. You want your demo to come out with a bang. You want it to come out with something that is dead square in the center, both language um, on the content of the script, production quality, music that is all lined up for your brand, you don't want, if you're a funny person, you don't want corny comedy on your demo. Um, you want clever comedy on your demo. You don't want corny material on there. You don't want music that has library music from 1972 under what's intended to be a contemporary national television spot. You don't want engineering things going on that have you fading out and fading up between spots. That stuff that used to go on on demos in the 70s and 80s that hasn't been on a demo in 30 years. Um, you right. want hard cuts between your spots. Poor, you don't want partner reads that go on. Poor long. direction. Poor direction. Um, you know, we're moving on to the, we have to move on to the next thing, the poor direction. We're, we're going to run out of time. I'm nobody sorry. listening to your demo should ever say, what on earth, who on earth thought it was okay for you to let them see the way you interacted with your partner on that spot, that kind of a thing. It's the producer, director of your demo who's responsible for making sure your choice is worth interesting and that you're using every mental muscle you have to show that you understand the nuances of my technique and that the performances are interesting and relevant. The last thing that can kill your demo is dreadful performance. If your responsibility should not be for yourself for your for condiment. The person you're hiring to produce your demo should not be rushing you into producing it with you before you're ready, nor should you, should, nor should you be nagging them about doing it before they check that you've amassed all the skills to really be doing it. So, yeah. Honestly, when I do demos for people, they've gone through a dozen privates on skills. The demo day is honestly really quite easy because it's everything that's right dead square in the center of oh, the Oh, gosh. I, we were in and out of there so fast. I loved it. And then I got that demo. I was so happy. Um, okay. Cool. What you may have it here. Go and break into the system. Sign up for our new day, too. You have to opt in. That's a, but if you sign up newsletter, you enter your information, you're going to get down to click through that email to be confirmed on our list. We have an opt-in policy, and we don't highlight that. Um, very important. Because we have a newsletter where we, we try to, uh, once a month, try to send it twice a month with all sorts of information about what's going on. We want all of our students to stay current on things. You know, and stuff can change in the business, too. We could say something three years ago that now has completely changed due to an advanced technology. That's what the newsletter's for. And also to let you know when we have upcoming events like this. Uh, go to braintrackaudio.com, listen to the demos that Nancy has produced. It's educational. Go to Voice Bank and listen to demos. Oh, read Nancy's Frequently Asked Questions. Incredibly useful. Uh, uh, register your domain name. You design your website, but if you haven't already, register your domain name. I know a lot of you are thinking, well, that's an easy thing to do, but you'd be surprised. Have a laugh. Well, should I do that? Yes. 
Yes. You know, there's one thing on here that I want to jump in really quickly. I know that there's some really valuable um, support on voice123.com where you can, you know, get your dental questions and go on to um, create threads on there and things like that. You know what? I would advise you to use those message boards and those chat rooms and those forums to get advice about equipment, not to get advice about if you really want to get your demo evaluated, I would necessarily ask other peers to evaluate your demo. I would get professional advice about your demo, and I would pay for it. Um, you can ask, but unless your friends are agents and casting directors, it's a lot of guesswork. I love how those forums allow you to get information about equipment, but I wouldn't ask for um, input from your colleagues um, about the content or quality of your demo. The other reason for that is that it opens up the possibility for people to write permanent, Googleable, negative things about human beings, and that is just not a smart thing to do for your business. There, and that being said, too, there was one thread that I commented on that I really loved that uh, a woman was going for her first in-person agent interview, and she asked, you know, what should I expect? What should I wear? And that's a great question, that's too. That's a great form. Oh, it's awesome. I love what it. What kind of microphone should I get? What right. kind of pop screen should what I should get? What should I expect that this person's going to ask me? Or should I be ready to read copy? You know, it's just nice, and then everyone can chime in with their experiences, and that's great. Anyway, okay, so uh, the word list we were talking about, the questionnaire, your likes and dislikes, pay attention to how others see you, pay attention to the magazines that are going to come in the mail today and the catalogs that come in the mail today. Um, yeah, if you want Nancy to brand you and evaluate your demo with agent ears, go to braintracksaudio.com and click on the purple Start Today button, which Sherry talked about. Okay, great. If you guys want to request oh, a consult lesson, go. I'm actually booked up pretty far in advance, especially there are, gosh, possibly upwards of as many as 500 people on this call, and I'm going to get an onslaught of requests, and I'm thrilled for it, and I live and breathe and eat this stuff, so I'm excited to get you guys into the calendar but there are only so many hours in the day. The next open slots begin in June. Um, and I just ask that you folks be patient with how I can schedule. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so we're doing a special discount for you guys who are on the webinar. Uh, our Mapping Your VoiceOver Business Plan MP3, we are, have it on sale for 39 bucks, And it's an hour and 47 minutes long. And we map out everything that we talked about at the beginning of this call about your VoiceOver Business Plan. Um, it's, it, that's an amazing value, amazing value. Uh, how to get an agent MP3? Oh, this is fun. It's a question that I get asked the most because I have quite a few agents. And um, <laughs> how do you get an agent? How do you do it? How do you do it? And we go into great detail on that MP3. That's 30 minutes long, and it's, uh, the price has been cut on that to $19. Uh, there is your special link, uh, breakintovoiceover.com slash special.html. That's the link just for you guys to go to. Now, that's going to be emailed out as well as a follow-up. Uh, okay, we have a teleseminar this coming Monday. That's kind of soon. It's 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on Monday, May 7th. It's acting for advertising. It's $49 for 90 minutes. Go to breakintovoiceover.com. There's a whole huge description about what we're going to be doing. It's for people. Um, people, submit your demos if you sign up for this teleseminar. Because and don't send your demos to braintracksaudio at yahoo.com. Follow the directions about how to submit the demos to break into voiceover.com. Yeah, via you send it. Um, I'm really excited for this call. I actually, I, I have been uh, harassing Nancy about letting her speak on some of her topics that's in her private curriculum. So we're going to speak on a couple of those topics and, and as well as self-directing and all the stuff that I do for demo reviews for some willing and lucky participants. So join us. And then we're going to open it up to Q&A at the end, which is my fave, which is what I want to get to right now. Go to breakintovoiceover.com, register for email list. have an entire interview series of MP3s that unfortunately are not ready now, but they will be hopefully by the middle of the summer, by July. Your interview with casting directors, producers, animation directors, writers from all over the United States, North America, uh, Australia, and it's about giving you guys access to what the people behind the curtain are doing and thinking and what's involved in their selection. It's important by what is going on in our brains. You know, I cast people on jobs every single day. Um, when I, um, I mean, basically, I pull from my database of people who studied with me. Um, I have a lot of people who email me demos and say, "Will you put me into consideration world for when you're casting?" If I 
if I haven't worked with a kind of a thing because I just don't know you and I can't trust your skills, but when I trust um, that I've coached you and I know who you are, um, after having worked with you, um, that's how I can begin to entertain that. So, Let's do it. Hi. Hi. How it? Wonderful girl. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming in, and I know we're short on time, so I'll start as, for as many as we can, and then whatever we can't, I'll just send to you. So maybe hopefully you guys can answer them, or um, people sure. can get in touch with you via the site. Or okay, so um, let's start here. What is the one thing besides graphics that can attract the eye of a client funneling through thousands of demos to make to take a listen? Mike Harris. Okay. Are you asking a, a client of like demos as far as like auditioning? Well, if we're talking three? about attracting the eye, it is purely a visual question. That's true. So if you've got a stack of demos on your desk, which is really scary to walk into someone's office and see the stacks and stacks of demos on their desk. Or the folder that exists in a talent agent's email where they take all those submitted um, demos and show them all into a folder. What can be done to attract the eye besides visual? Well, the eye registers visual. So the visual smack is really important, and there's nothing that says to a buyer or a top market um, eye that somebody is not at top market competitive quality more than the failure to have branding at all, pictures of mouths and microphones, or pictures of the talent themselves. I know there's always debates about this. There was even a thread about this on Voice123. Should I put my picture on there? You know, I'm just going to go out on a limb here as a person who does casting every day, as somebody who was an agent and judged these things myself, when I saw somebody's picture, I thought, oh, small regional talent. I mean, I know that that's up for debate, and a lot of people disagree with that, but that's just my own perspective. I'd say if you want to catch somebody's eye, yes, you need to have your graphics locked down. And as talent who has to pursue work either through an agent or through directly through clients every day, if you're in a position where you can FedEx something, I think sending something via FedEx is a good idea, better than regular mail, because FedExes get open first before regular mail. And it's a business of relationships. Yeah. You know? I and thought I, you were about I to say, say that. Yeah. yeah, it's the business of relationships. And, um, if you have a friend who's already represented by that talent agent, and, you know, that talent agent can, you know, that friend can get you in front of that agent or that buyer, it's a business of relationships and work your friends. Yeah, work your friends. And also, too, if you get a job and you book a job with somebody, then, you know, you, when you write your thank you note to them, you're going to say, you know, thank you for this job, and the best thing you can do, say about me is when you refer me to your friends, so I appreciate any referrals or however you want to put it. But that's the best way to catch the eye. Next question. Wonderful. Please. Thank you. Um, Carl Hedgepeth, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Hi, wants Carl. to know, what are the top five things a new, as yet undiscovered voice artist must do in order to successfully launch a voiceover business? Oh, I love this question. Top five things. Well, items one, two, three, and four of the business plan. Their education needs to have been complete, number one. Their inventory needs to be contemporary and evaluated by a pro before you go out there and risk putting it forward in front of buyers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. You really need a professional person to sit down and evaluate that with you and for you before you go putting that out into the marketplace. Um, you, need to know, you have to have your marketing in place. You have to have proper graphics and branding. You have to have a comfort level with how to work your own home equipment. Okay, that's items one, two, three, four. I'm going to give you five, six, and seven. You said you only wanted five. I'm going to give you three more. The three A's of success. Are you ready for this? You need to be available, you need to be affable, and you need to be able. You need to be available to do stuff and get things back quickly. I know that the people I know who I've trained who work the most are the people who are checking their emails regularly, they're responding to emails regularly, they keep their subscriptions up and alive to voice one, two, three, and they stay on top of everything. They're available and they can return things quickly. They are a well-oiled German machine and they're reliable. They're available. They're affable. Make it easy to want to do business with you. Nobody wants to do business with people who are suspicious and difficult. Um, 
and to able. You've got to be able to back up all the fancy pantsy marketing and graphics that you put together. It would be very hard before the horse to go do um, all your marketing and branding if you haven't gotten an education first. That's why we put them in an order of one, two, three, four. The marketing, you know, there's nothing more disappointing than having a beautiful package and opening it up and hitting play and having a hinky demo behind that beautiful marketing or having beautiful marketing and then going and showing up at a talent agency and giving a performance that shows that you spent all your um, money on beautiful packaging and there's no substance to support it. So you have to be able before you can even begin to indulge a conversation about pretty pictures on your demo cover. And, and have a thick skin <laughs> because ultimately there's going to be a lot more. And it's not a thick skin to rejection, which yes, there's a lot of rejection, but the amount of inattention is what is the killer. When you don't hear anything back for a good long while, you're sending out auditions out there in the dark, you, you need to be able to handle that. So understand that that's when it's going to be one of the things you're going to need to surmount, and you will do it. But the thick skin, very which, important. Which, of course, goes against, and all of us are creative people, which it goes against our personalities to actually have a thick skin. And we can't even delve into why we're all so thick that we have to go into a business where the odds are against us, but thick skin. I think the fact that, there, that you folks are even on this webinar in the first place is a great first step. I mean, I just yes. want to salute you guys for all doing this in the first place because more acting classes that teach you how to get versatile, gosh, that's what 99% of it is out there. It's about teaching you about more acting, about more versatility. The fact that you're trying to wrap your brains around thinking about this as a business person is a huge thing. I just mentioned my friend Adam a while ago. His um, website was presented to um, a new agent who is going to be representing him in yet another market. And the agent looked at his website, and these were the words out of her mouth. She said she looked at his website, his graphics, his branding, and all the different demos up there, his bio, and all the different things he said about himself and the work that he's created for himself. And the agent's words were, now this is a business I can get excited about. I can get excited about doing business with this person. If you put yourself forward to business people like another business person, it's golden. Next question, Peggy. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Brian Heyman, if you already have an agent inside the doorway, isn't the demo that shows versatil versatility a viable representation? No. Would you recommend a branding demo in conjunction with a commercial demo, narration demo, et cetera? A branding demo? Your commercial demo should be a branded demo. It's a narrowly branded commercial demo. And then you, like, look, go to, if you go to my website or if you go to my, my um, what's And that's the best you... walk an example, frankly. I mean, if you go to braintracksaudio.com and you click on the knob, um, that is production, and then you go to graduate demos, you'll be able to listen to all those demos. Anna's is on there. Now, her commercial demo is narrowly branded, and we waited until later on down in the game to do an animation demo for Anna mm -hmm. that showed her versatility. And then we did three more narration demos. Then I went and did an audiobook demo, and I have British voice demos because I book a, a ton of British voice narration, phone IVR stuff. It's not that you can never be versatile, but in your interest, but your commercial demo, even once you're already on the inside, Brian, should be a narrowly branded thing that helps the agent introduce you to buyers. When you're done introducing yourself to an agent, an agent then has to turn around and introduce you to a buyer who doesn't know you. Here's, here's the thing. I think that as talent, we tend to think that the buyers need to see everything that we can do within that one minute, and that's simply not true. You need to get in the door first. And it's your agent's job. That's great that you have an agent to do this so you don't have to take on that work. It's your agent's job to say, oh, you need a narration person this time? Oh, you need promo guy this time? Well, check out Brian. He can do all of that stuff. So you need to have it separate because buyers aren't looking for one demo that shows them the entire spectrum of the rainbow of what you can do. They, they like having it chunked up. And even better that it's chunked up in, in little minute segments because they don't have time to sit and listen to every single thing that we've ever done. Next question, please. Per perfect. Okay. When you listen, uh, John Pruden, sorry. John Pruden wants to know, when you listen to a demo slash view a website, do you ever say, you're doing great, don't change a thing? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I had that wonderful experience. I think anyone who goes to breakintovoiceover.com and buys that $49 teleseminar um, that we did a couple weeks back, um, the voiceover business plan, 
they'll hear that experience. I love when I get to have that experience. Um, we were putting people through the woodshed on that um, teleseminar as well, and I said, okay, Anna, hand me a demo. And we popped a demo in, and I had to give it the whole pre-roll by saying, okay, everybody, sometimes this can feel a little harsh. It's not mean-spirited, but I'm giving you a, the good, the bad, and the ugly here so that we can, um, so that we can uh, you know, help you guys get and uh, I actually had the experience where I popped a demo in, and it was awesome. And I love it when I get to say that because, you know, I said to this one guy, I said, you know what, I to it a couple times, and um, it was great. Didn't uh, need to uh, well, no, on, on that MP3, we, unfortunately, our volunteer did get. Oh, was that the one? Yeah, I'm that, sorry. Was the la- that was the lady one. What she, was the one where we got Bob Sauer's thing? That was just you and Bob Sauer. Oh, Okay. Well, never mind. There are, sorry about that. I got that wrong. There are some times when I pop in a demo or I look at a website and I go, you know what? This is excellent. And frankly, as a human being, I love when I have an opportunity to tell somebody that the money they spent happened to have been well-deserved and great. And we had so many other things to talk about in the remainder of that lesson about what he could do next, how he could market himself better, how he, other things that he could do to develop his career. So we sort of checked that box and went on to a next topic. Well, and, and part of our, I mean, a whole big aspect of our philosophy is because I'm coming at this from a talent angle. I don't want people to have to spend money that they don't need to spend. We're constantly having to say, no, 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 don't spend your money on this, spend your money on that. Don't get this, don't go crazy with your new $5,000 mic. Take that five thousand dollars and do all these other things with it. Absolutely, you know? if something doesn't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And, I, and that's another thing, also, is that I have a lot of really wonderful colleagues out there in the world who do things similar to what I do. I mean, there are other people out there who make demos who are quite good, and some people who are not. But I, when when I review somebody's demo, I ask you to please not tell me who did it, because I don't want to have to say anything, you know, negative about something that one of my colleagues has done with an awareness of who did it, and. If I have an opportunity to say, oh, my goodness, so-and-so did a phenomenal job, I couldn't have done it any better. I love the opportunity to be able to say that it's great. Do we have time for one more question? Right. Do we need to wrap up? Um, you guys, if you guys want to do one more question? Let's do or... one more question. Let's do it. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to do one. I'm going to do two. Okay. One is Nancy, um, Bob Sawyer, Sawyer, I think his name is. Mm-hmm. Sawyer. Sour, I'm sorry. Nancy, do you and your graphics guy do the same kind of thing for branding as you do for voiceover demos, or is it always a matter of starting over? Ah, wait. I'm not sure I understand the question. Is he saying, like, taking an existing demo and branding it, like going to Jason and having him brand something? Sometimes it depends on the person, and that's why I do privates with people because everybody's particular situation has a nuance that's unique to them. Sometimes people, I listen to somebody's, there are some people who are going to go to braintracksaudio.com and they're going to request a phoner lesson with me and during that phoner lesson I might be listening to their demo and saying, oh my goodness, this whole thing needs an overhaul. I can't even begin, I can't even begin to talk to you about how you should brand this thing because the quality of the demo is not enough information. It's so poor that the quality of the demo isn't enough information for me. Or I could hear an amazing demo and go, okay, I'm getting from you that the style you're putting forward is this. Let's get on board with my graphics guy and go down that pipeline and start to talk about cooking up an, Im- um, an image that reflects all the great stuff that I'm hearing here. Um, possibly sometimes I'm listening to a demo and it doesn't need an overhaul. It just needs a makeover. And that's something that we determine in that private consult. Oh, I forgot to say, go uh, uh, Brain Tracks Audio, there's a demo makeover section that's so cool. And you'll see exactly what Nancy's talking about, where they just... They didn't need a total overhaul sometimes. They just needed a facelift. Sometimes you just need to rearrange spots. There's a couple spots sometimes. that need yeah. rearranging, or we need to replace 20% of your demo with things that really speak to your particular style better. And then we wrap it up in a graphic package. So everybody's issue is a little bit different, and, and that's why I teach privately. Guys, I, was com- I was coming from it... Uh, Atlanta, and I moved out here, and I knew I wanted to do voiceover, and I had copies of all those spots that I had done in Atlanta, and I was very excited about it, and it just, to be globally competitive, I was not able to use those spots, and that's just me, my experience, and then I refer one of my good friends over, and his demo just required a switching of of a couple of spots, and, you know. Yeah, in that regard, I just (laughs) sent him straight over to my engineer, and I said, hey, don't spend a nickel on me. Go to my engineer, have him flip these two spots to the thing that's really a better representation of you shows up earlier in your demo, and he didn't spend another nickel on me. So it really is a customized conversation. 
Um, and that's a good point, Anna. Just because you booked something doesn't mean that it really belongs on the portrait of yourself. Yeah. Good question. Do we have one more you said? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm just going to do – we've got – actually, we've got tons of questions more, but I'm going to do <laughs> a last one, which is um, – so uh, I, again, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, and I apologize, Simone. Um, I'm a professional Spanish talent with over 15 years of experience. Wow. Do you have any ex Do you have any experienced staff who can evaluate and give advice for foreign voice talents like me who Absolutely. works for the U.S. and global market on a daily basis? My most successful student is a global talent. Absolutely. My engineer is Guatemalan. I've produced Spanish demos. I've produced French demos. I'm trilingual. Absolutely. And one more question? Let's do one more. Come on. I actually hooked up Jackie Dollar with a recurring job. She's the voice of um, all the uh, she's the voice of all the voice messaging systems for one of the largest voice messaging companies um, in the United States. After she studied with me, I hooked her up with somebody who was looking for um, a Spanish speaking talent, and she's just oh my goodness, she's done so well, and she's so lovely to do business with. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little trickier, but it's um. It's, it's been quite successful. One more. Are you there? Okay. Now? One, oh, you? one more. <laughs> um, again, this, there's this so many. Um, okay. Lisa Fleming, what is the total average initial investment for breaking in to the That's business? a great question that we answer in our MP3, Voice of Our Business Plan. It depends on what you're bringing to the table. I mean, if you're starting from absolute scratch, you're going to need to go through a private course of study that gives you all the skills, helps you understand your style. My, as of today, my consultation fee is fifty um, is a hundred and thirty dollars for a fifty minute consult, either in person or on phone. Typically, it takes people about a dozen of those privates to get through the coursework. Um, today, demos are. $1,200 to get a good top market demo created for you. Marketing is a little bit more. Um, home equipment is a little bit more. All of this is on the MP3. All this is on the MP3. And that being said, for home equipment stuff, we have a link on breakingvoiceover.com with all the home equipment stuff that we talk about in that MP3 because I went through this and I am a working actor and I don't want to spend money on anything more than I have to. So I put equipment on there that I personally used to develop my voiceover business, and it is the most cost-effective equipment that I could find in my experience. And, I, you know, prices are actually, since I've got my first home studio, which was like February of 2005, it, prices have gone down a little bit for that equipment, so that's actually a good thing. But, um, yeah, it's going to depend on the person. We, we answer this in greater detail on the MP3, but, you know, the reason I only sell one private at a time instead of bulk packages of, oh, you have to buy 12 privates or anything is because... Sometimes if people are very, very talented and have a lot of natural ability, they manage to fly through the coursework faster than other people. So that's just one of those things. And if sometimes, you know, people take a little longer to learn how to do something, it becomes a little more expensive, but it's all totally teachable. And it, the part of the reason that we say these are four business steps that you need to take, we'll tell you how to do them as efficiently and as inexpensively as you possibly can but you need to still do all those four steps because the problem that I see, too, is like I, I see friends of mine that say they want to do it, and then they go through the whole process, and they have a demo, and they spend the money on the demo, and then they won't get home studio equipment, and they won't get any graphics, and they won't go out. And, and if you don't have that, you can't try to get an agent or try to get online to submit auditions. And so I'm like, well, why would you spend $2,500 doing privates and a demo and then not spend the additional $1,500 to get your home studio equipment, your graphics, your CDs, all that blah, 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 done. And a way of distributing it. I mean, if you're, you're, again, once again, like we said before, your voice business is a product, and you're selling your product. It's just like if you were, um, if you were, if you had a tequila that you wanted to get out onto the market, you can concoct the best tequila in the world, but if you don't have a shipping company that can get that tequila up here from Mexico, you won't have a means of distribution. So that's about learning how to use your home equipment. One more question. Yeah. Or no. <laughs> Were we talking into the boy? Natalie. Natalie, you out there? Hmm. Natalie, I can't hear you. We were we were excited to do one more question. 
sure there are a ton of questions. There always are. I hear a voice. I hear that. Yes. There's Angela. Yes, we're here. Okay. Um, okay. Are we still live? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Do you want to do one more question? Uh, um, sure. If you guys would like to, let's do the last okay. question and... Okay. Go ahead. Uh, um, Maxine Dunn wants to know, how important is it to have a slogan and or a tagline to accompany your branding image? For example, inspired experience voiceover, or the voice of reason, or the voice inside your head, etc. Thanks. Blech. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just important, it's important to not do that. It's really corny. It's really corny. Anna, do you have a... Definitely have a thought on that, and my thought is this. You need to know what your branding is. As talent, we need to know who we are. That's my other line is beeping now. As talent, we need to know who we are so that if you are ever sending an email to a prospective buyer or an agent, if you are picking up the phone at 5.30 in the afternoon, if you are any time putting yourself forward to know what commonly known as your elevator pitch, okay? So if you're, if for instance, if my voice print is friendly mom, I need to be able to say in my cover letter, because cover letters need to be very brief, you know, I am, this is my voice print, but never have a slogan that says, like, I'm the voice of reason. My like, graphics that's so guy, corny, I want to so bark corny. on myself. <laughs> can't handle it. <laughs> um, my graphics guy always says, um, and he works in advertising for years, if you, if you feel tempted to put a corny slug line or tagline on your image, it means your image hasn't done the job yet. The image says everything. You know, if you see a picture of a Coca-Cola bottle, right, where the art department has spent a ton of money to have it look like beads of water and sweat are running down that glass Coca-Cola bottle, that image says refreshing. You know what I mean? That image says this is the cold drink you want on a hot day. So you won't – the image should say it. Anna never needs to say in her letter, I'm a sassy mom – who is kicky and sexy and blah, 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 that's the whole purpose of a good image. The image says that so that you don't need a corny tagline to over-explain the image. I mean, I totally get that from looking at your image. That's why it's such a great image. Yeah, there will, there will be times when you're speaking to a person when you're going to need to have an awareness and you're going to need to pitch yourself. Oh, you need to be yeah. able to talk that's, about that's it. That's where I was coming from. You, you need, need, to, be need to be able to, to pitch yourself. It, but you don't want yeah. that slug line on the image because no, 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 it syncs up, up the artwork. artwork. No. Right, it just syncs up the artwork. You just have to have a vocabulary for it should you ever need to discuss it. One more question. Okay. We're so, this is fun. We want one more. One more, one more. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to make it really quickly because we're actually co totally running over. The oh, we're over. Okay, you know, that's all right. Then. Yeah, we don't no, have to. It's okay. We don't have to. We're just getting all psyched about this. That's fine. You know, if anybody has um, any questions that they want just, answered or anything, just, just tell them, you know, to feel free to share. Okay, it, um, Sherry, Sherry Hewitt wants to know, when it comes to the point of not using your picture in your voiceover marketing, how would you address the ability of a potential client to see your pick on your per, uh, personal domain website? Uh, this is a How great, would that affect your marketing? That's a great question, and I know Cherie. Um, you know what, and Cherie is having the same issue that I do, and if you go to my website, I've had to marry an on-camera career with a voiceover career at one website, and it is very difficult to do, and it's always a work in progress. Um, just don't have your face on your voiceover materials. I know that you're going to have to have your face on your personal website. What I did, and I, 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 I'm... There's a couple I, schools of thought on this. Yeah, there are a couple schools of thought on this. And, again, you know, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. And, um, can I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What I would suggest doing is if you are an actress and you have a website for your acting world, um, let's say your website is uh, nancywolfson.com. I'm not an actress and I don't have an acting website, but I'm just using my own name as an example. If I were an actress and I had NancyWilson.com and that were the storefront for all of my acting, my on-camera reels, my pictures and all of that kind of a thing, 
I would put a link on there that says, you know, there's a link on that website that says photos, uh, video reel, whatever. I would also put a link on there that says voiceover work. And then clicking on that link should take, I would say, would take um, the person searching that site to nancywolfsonvo.com, and it would take them to a separate website that is all about the voiceover business. Then if I were pitching myself in the voiceover world, I would only email people a link to nancywolfsonvo.com, and they would never get taken to my acting website. But on the acting website, you have a link on there that branched it off into your separate voiceover website. Great. And that's it, guys. Thank you so, so much for speaking with us for this very <laughs> We Thank really so enjoyed it. This amazing voice was fun, and there will be more. Wonderful, you guys. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, Anna. You guys did wonderful. Thank you all for attending, and we look forward to seeing you back very soon. Take Thank care and have a great weekend. Point, point, point. It's awesome. Thank you. Bye.